Okay, it is time for some parts and pieces discussions. Uh, so let's dig into the parts and pieces of what we're doing here. So the, the point of this particular lecture is to talk about all the key elements of the implants, abu implant abutments and crowns fabricated by utilizing the CEREC. Um, again, a quick reminder, subscribe and like. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like these videos so we can do more. Um, but let's go ahead and dig into uh, the key elements of the implant abutments and crowns. All right, so tie base. Serona product, I know there are a couple of other companies out there that have started to make their own titanium bases. Um, tie base, let's talk about tie base. Um, three pieces come in the box. Now, for Omnicam, we don't see this piece. You have to buy those separately, and they come in a box of like 20. So the tie base itself is this little guy right here, the titanium base. Comes with a screw, um, and depending on what version you buy, it may or may not have that scan body. But the scan body is the third piece of the puzzle that you need in order to image the restoration. So, as we go through here, you're going to want to pay attention. These are very specific to the implant system. Um, the NBA Nobel Active 5.0 will not work on an Astra implant. It will not work on an Ankylos implant. It will not work on any other implant except for an implant that has exactly the same interface as a Nobel Active, an internal conical connection that is a 5.0, which is a regular platform size. Got it? NBA 5.0L is the Nobel Active regular platform size. It will only work on that size. So these are very specific. You have to order a tie base for each individual implant platform that you're using. Um, they will not be interchangeable <laughs> unless your implant platforms are identical. So like for the Ankylos implants, there are a couple of their implant systems where all the platforms are the same regardless of the length and the size of the implant. Um, but generally you're going to need one specific for the size and the system. So pay special attention to those, okay? But again, here's the box. Comes with a titanium base, the screw, um, which must be the appropriate screw for the implant system and size, and the scan body, depending on what kind you buy. Here we are again, another picture a little bit more zoomed in. The titanium base, this is the piece that screws into the implant. Of course, the screw goes into the implant, screws to a certain specific torque, and then the scan body itself, this guy right here, will sit atop the tie base or the scan post. Now, I want you to pay special attention to this piece right here. Let me erase all these lines real quick. So pay special attention to this piece right here. There's a little groove there, a notch there rather, that needs to specifically mesh or mate with a piece inside the, the scan body. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, you need to pay special attention to the notch and the groove. All right, here is the scan post. So just like the tie base, the scan post is specific to the implant system and platform size. This is not a one size fits all. If you're used to using implants, you're used to ordering a bunch of different implant impression copings, open tray, closed tray, regular platform, narrow platform, wide platform. You know, for every different implant size, there's a different implant impression coping. The same thing for the scan post or the tie base. Now, what's the difference between the scan post and the tie base? Well, it's really just the height. This, uh, roughly that much height is different. Um, the scan post and the tie base, this area is identical on the two. Um, so the scan, scan post basically elevates uh, the, the impression platform uh, up a little bit higher and it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Remember I told you there were two flavors of uh, scan bodies, the white for the blue cam and the uh, gray for the Omnicam. The Omnicam can image both of them. Um, I've used white and gray before. I haven't ever used a blue cam to try to use a gray. Uh, I haven't used a blue cam in years. So maybe maybe it's been a couple of years. But uh, you want to make sure you have what you need for your system. So again, I can't ex uh, stress this enough. 
The scan post, just like the tie base, is unique. The platform is unique to the platform of the implant and the system. It cannot be interchanged unless you have an identical platform um, between implants. And the gray, if you're using the Omnicam, um, you should be using the gray scan bodies. All right? Groove in the notch, here we go. So this is what I was mentioning before. This is really critical. We'll get into this uh, down the road here a little bit. So we have our scan post. Here is your notch. So you can see, I'm gonna try to draw on it. This little square deal is elevated up above the platform of the implant. So we wanna pay special attention to where that lines up in relation to the scan body. Um, now you'll notice the scan post also has this indicator here to tell you where that um, notch is. All right, so there's a scan post. Again, the, the biggest difference between the scan post and the tie base is basically this much metal. So take that much metal away, that piece were shifted down against the platform, you'd have a tie base. Um, Scan posts are reusable. Um, sterilize them in between patients. Um, reusable, depending on the implant platform you're using. Um, the tie bases, you can reuse them, um, but if it's used in a crown, you generally, in my experience, you don't want to try to reuse it if it's been in someone else's mouth for a long period of time. Okay, here is the scan post with the scan body mating. So you can see here's the little notch on the outside indicating where the groove is, sliding in and over the notch on the scan post. All right, can you force these together if they're misaligned? If the notch is over here and the notch is over there, yes, you can force them together, and I think I've got a video that'll show you you can do that. So you have to pay special attention. This is plastic, um, so you can deform it, you can push it. Um, over the metal and it'll it'll see it all the way down uh, So we want to be very cautious when we're delivering that that we can see where it's going so Down the road when we get to the point where we're actually imaging um, and placing a scan post or a tie base You want to make sure that you orient this notch um, ideally buckly or palatally um, depending on where you are so that you can see the plastic sliding over the metal notch all right, you wanna be able to visualize that when you're inserting it. That's probably the biggest place for error um, in all of Seric and Tie Base is not getting this notch lined up with that notch. So pay special, super special attention that when, you're, when you've got this piece screwed into the implant, um, that you can see where this notch is in relation to the notch on the scan body. Otherwise, when you try to slide these in, it'll be misoriented, and then you design the whole crown in an incorrect um, orientation. And then we end up with a big mess, and you have to redesign, or you have to cut off the indices, which is no bueno. All right, so again, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. You have to be cautious of where the notch is in relation to the groove that's on the inside of the scan body, okay? So again, here we are, here's the tie base as opposed to the scan body. You can see how much shorter it is. There's the groove, lines up with an internal groove. There's the notch, I'm sorry, it lines up with an internal groove which correlates to the external groove on the scan body. All right, it's critical, absolutely critical that they're mated correctly. There you can see the groove. It's not a very deep groove and this is somewhat flexible plastic so you can certainly get that scan body or tie base to force in there but we've got to make sure that we mesh our grooves together appropriately all right everybody with me so which tie base do i need and the short answer to that is it depends <laughs> it depends on what implant system and size you're using so here we have the manufacturers over here and these are some of the main ones there's another another sheet that i didn't put in here um, I've been using Nobel BioCare, the internal uh, conical connection of the active. I've also used um, Strawman, Restored Strawman, uh, you worked on the tri-channel, 
um, Dense Supply, the Astrotech Osseous Speed, Biomet 3i. So the short answer is you just need to know exactly what implant system you're working with and what the platform size is. Beyond that, you can order anything you need to. So here for me are the ones that I usually use. Um, again, we're looking at Nobel BioCare, the Active, and then either a regular platform or a narrow platform um, implant. So with Nobel Active, it gets a little confusing because they have two platform sizes, implant diameters rather, um, that, uh, uh, that are the regular platform size. So you just need to make sure that you've got the one that you, you need to have before you start restoring it because you can't cross um, you can't put the wrong implant, the wrong tie base size on an implant. Just make sure you have the right size. What I like to do is when I get the okay from either the surgeon or from myself when I placed an implant that they're ready to restore, I order the tie base at that point. The moment I get that letter in the mail, as soon as the patient schedules, I order the tie base. And as soon as I do the uncovering and, and the second stage surgery, I order the tie base. I want to make sure that I've got it before I need it excuse me, so that I can make sure to have the right material. And then of course scan post is the same. Um, the scan posts are reusable. Um, the tie base, once you've put it in a patient's mouth, it's done. So depending on how you want to do it, I would suggest having what you need to have um, before you need it. <laughs> so order it well in advance. And your Serona wrap um, should be able to help you get everything that you need when you need it. Okay, so let's talk about the hybrid abutment crown. So here I'm going to give you a definition. This is nomenclature. Hybrid abutment crown. There it is. Okay, so this is a crown that's attached to a tie base permanently. They're cemented together. We call that the hybrid abutment crown. Okay, and it comes out of a block that looks like this. Of course, the hybrid abutment comes out of a block that looks like that too. But for now, we're talking about the hybrid abutment crown. All right, that's this. It's a block of lithium disilicate or telio or zirconia that's already attached to the tie base. That is the hybrid abutment crown. That's the monolithic restoration that we talked about early at the beginning. Monolithic hybrid abutment crown, one block, okay? Um, so for, the, for that block, like I mentioned before, we can do a telio. This is a temporary style that can be used as a long-term temporary. All right, long-term temporary. Um, the nice thing about this particular block, if you're using it, is you can use it for gingival sculpting. Um, you can add composite to it several times, have them come in, add a little bit more, wait two or three weeks for the gum to spawn, have them come in, add a little bit more, sculpt the gingiva with the addition of composite. It does require a tie base, um, which once it's cemented, unless you're gonna cut it out and sterilize it, um, it's one and done, it's used. So that being said, um, once you've used the telio block, I would assume that you're gonna need another tie base for the definitive restoration. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about this monolithic and the two-piece restoration planning in case completion, all right? So here we have the distinction between a hybrid abutment and a hybrid abutment crown. All right, we've got the hybrid abutment, which has a tie base and a piece of ceramic, which we would call a custom abutment attached to it. All right, so this is the hybrid abutment here. You can see it's clearly delineated. And we use the MO block, the medium opacity, um, or you can use an LT block, but we use normally the MO block for this hybrid abutment, okay? The hybrid abutment crown, the monolithic restoration is this right here, okay? One single block plus a tie base gives you a hybrid abutment crown. With a hybrid abutment, we use a, a block and then a separate block that makes the crown. So this is the hybrid abutment, and then we have a separate crown that goes over the top. For this guy, this is it. This is a screw retained restoration. This leads to a cement retained restoration, okay? So we're essentially making a custom abutment and then a separate crown on the top. 
and I'll show you some cases of those here down the road. But to make sure everybody's clear, we've got a hybrid abutment and a hybrid abutment crown. Um, and the hybrid abutment generally requires two blocks. We use the abutment block and then a standard block of some flavor, whether it's an Emacs, Lucite, Feldspath. The hybrid abutment crown uses one block, okay? Monolithic and more than one lithics. <laughs> Dilithic. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about shades. So it comes in two flavors. Uh, hybrid abutment crown, generally we use the LT block. Uh, the hybrid abutment, the custom abutment, we generally use an MO block. And you can see the shades here um, and the shades there. All right. Everybody clear? The reason we're using the MO, this guy, the MO block, um, is because it tends to mask that titanium really, really well. I find that oftentimes I'm using the hybrid abutment, the custom abutment, so to speak, with a separate crown more in the anterior because the screw positioning is a little bit less uh, favorable for a screw retained restoration. Hybrid abutment crowns. So all three of these are hybrid abutment crowns. Four of those, I guess I should say. The hybrid abutments have a separate crown unit to them. I apologize for the graininess of the pictures. And there are a couple of other things I'll point out to you. Um, but basically we've got hybrid abutment crowns. You can see we've got a tie base attached to a ceramic, tie base, ceramic, tie base, ceramic, tie base, ceramic. Whereas for these two guys, I've got tie base ceramic and a crown. Tie base ceramic and a crown. And these crowns are cemented on inside the mouth. Intraoral cementation of the crowns in the mouth. Right? Now these guys are all cemented outside the mouth. So the tie base is attached to the, the ceramic outside the mouth. Gives us a lot better control over this junction that you can see there. Now there are a couple of things you'll notice. Look at all the gray in that area. Lots and lots of gray, and you can see the gray coming through here where it's clear. There's a specific cement which I did not use for these restorations called Multilink Hybrid Abutment Cement. And it comes in an opacity called HO0, high opacity zero, which is like the brightest white you've ever seen. And it's designed to block out this gray color. You need an exam? Be right there. All right, so that being said, we wanna make sure we use the appropriate terminology here. We've got a hybrid abutment, and then we've got a hybrid abutment plus crown. Hybrid abutment, hybrid abutment plus crown. That was my hygienist just asking me to come for an exam. So we obviously also need an Omnicam or some sort of an acquisition unit. Um, and then we can either use the compact milling unit or <laughs> the MCXL or the MC1 or the MCX. All of these will work. Um, this little guy I used and used and used. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. For those of you who have used one of these little compact milling units, remember the little magnet right there in the lid and it had to touch exactly the right spot right there. Well, after years of use, and most of you have probably experienced this, um, the magnet would fall out and I would just set it right there. And so we could leave the door open while it was milling. It was cool because it didn't generally make a very big mess. You wouldn't get much water out here, but you could watch it a lot closer. It was nice. Um, of course, this guy has a built-in some sort of a sensor on the back to tell if it's closed or not, and that's no fun. But we obviously need to have the correct machinery in the office um, so that we can do what we need to do. All right. We're again talking about all the stuff that we're going to need, and the parts and pieces that we're going to need for the restorative um, process. This is what I like to use to polish my restorations. Um, I like to use this pre-polish gray or blue, whatever color you want to call that. It's kind of grayish blue or bluish gray. Um, I'll pre-polish with this, and then I use the um, fine or extra fine on an extra stiff brush and, and shine it up. 
And if I've done my job right, those restorations after they come out of the machine should be just really, really shiny. And then we need something to attach the restoration to the tie base with. And here's the materials that we're gonna need to attach. So we've got some sort of an etchant, which we use to treat the ceramic, um, and a silane. And you'll notice that this guy right here, the etchant prime, has both. All right, so I like to use this etchant prime. Um, but then there's that hybrid abutment cement. This is medium opacity zero. It comes in HO zero, which I'd recommend. HO zero, let me fix that, HO zero comes in HO0, which is a much more opaque white than the medium opacity zero. And I'd get the HO0 instead of the medium opacity. Works a little bit better. This is what we treat the ceramic with and then eventually attach it with. Now we need a micro etcher to etch the um, titanium um, and the 50 micron aluminum oxide. You wanna be very, very careful when you're loading your micro etcher that you put in the correct material. All right? Um, here's the process that we're going to use um, going through uh, the attachment and delivery process. We want to make sure the patient's prepared. So this requires surgical clearance. Whether that's from you, whether that's from a surgeon, it needs to happen. It needs to be documented. Make sure that you have what you need to have. And like I said, I like to order those in advance. Make sure you have them before you need them. Um, we need to do the imaging or design process. And a lot of times I'll separate the imaging and design process for the patient's benefit. I'll give them the option. If you want to stay and wait, this will take about two hours. You're welcome to sit, but you'll have about an hour and a half to wait while I'm designing and attaching your restoration, or you can come back tomorrow or come back this afternoon. Um, so the imaging design process, the lab steps, the delivery and continuing care. All right, so that's the kind of the process overview that we're gonna use as we're talking about implant restor restor uh, restorations.